Welcome to Crossroads and happy Mother's Day, everybody. Yeah, Mother's Day and horses. How can you go wrong? Yes, we have a, a horse behind us that has never been written, ridden, that has uh, never been tamed. And uh, today we're going to see if that actually happens before our very eyes. This horse has been in here for a while before you came in, and uh, it's used to the, the, the sound, the music. It's just white noise for the horse. Doesn't bother the horse at all, though you can see the horse is a bit more intrigued by the screen than anything else. We're going to have a, a living object lesson of what it's like when we are put into the hands of God or when God puts his hands on us. And God comes in as a more powerful and more caring being for us than we are for ourselves. And Todd Pierce, my friend, is going to be doing this today. A little story behind that is he was on my podcast called The Aggressive Life a couple years ago. And then we stayed sort of in rough touch. And then one way or another, we ended up hunting together in Idaho for elk. And that's when I found out what he actually did for a living and what his whole thing is. Todd is a former... Uh, professional rodeo rider. Uh, he's a genuine horse whisperer, I think, as you will see here today. And uh, he also does things with horses that are amazing with a bunch of other people in different audiences. Let's welcome my friend Todd Pierce onto our stage here today. All right, so... When we talked last year, he told me what, what he did with horses and in front of live audiences. I said, you do what? You break a live horse. Now, even that word in and of itself, breaking a horse, can be a bit scary sounding, but actually it's something beautiful about it. And you prefer actually not to call it breaking a horse. You would prefer to call what? We just train him. Training horse. Yeah. And, uh, and you didn't think that you would actually be inside of a church building ever doing this, did you? What happened? No, there? because <clears throat> I guess there's been a lot of guys in the past that have said, oh, we would love to have you come to our church. And then they realized what the financial and the, um, the insurance <laughs> issues were going to be. And, and so they're like, ah, oh, well, maybe we'll do it in the parking lot. And I'm like, nobody can do it in a church. And I sh that was the perfect thing to say to Brian Tome, is nobody can do it. And literally two weeks later, his, they wanted to do it two weeks after that. I was like, oh, my gosh, these guys actually are that crazy. And that, but the beauty of it is, is I love to see a mother and a father, a spiritual mother and father that have developed a family that they'll do anything they can to make sure that you guys know how loved you are. And so it's a beautiful testament to what you guys have here. Well, good, good job, uh, Ryan. She has a lot of scars on her. What yeah, the... it looks like she's got some owies. All right, you'll be talking about that, I'm sure, in a little bit. So, yeah, so I came home and I told our folks, our CFO and others, I said, look, we're going to do this. You can figure out if you want to tell insurance or not, but we are going to do this. My exact line. And what do you know? We worked out with insurance and everything was well. So Todd gives a, uh, uh, you're going to do a, just tell us what we're looking at here today. Why is this spiritually significant? I think that Jesus has been mo so misrepresented by Christianity and the culture that uh, to really get a, a real live glimpse of what it looks like to become more powerful because you've submitted, uh, we don't see that in culture we only see that in the gospel and that jesus came to give us life and that much more abundantly he came to set us free why is it that the culture feels so trapped and and so what we do with the horse is that i want her to be free and she doesn't know what level of freedom i want her to live with and so i want her to see herself the way i see her so while we're doing this um, i just hope that everybody here can find a way to connect with what's going on in her heart because she's pretty confused about who she is right now. She's not free. She's really actually a slave to herself and all the influences around her until um, what may happen here today. We think free is riding open on the range with no corral and no human master that's ever ridden us. That's free. That's, that's not free from your understanding. No, you're actually still a victim to all of your environment, to disease, to predators. Um, it looks really cool in the movies but in real life, it's super tragic, and it's a brutal existence for wild horses, uh, more than most uh, 
mammals. They, they just don't do well in the, in the mild. And in con contrast, a trained horse is exponentially more powerful, um, lives longer, healthier, more productive lives than anything in the wild. So actually, they're, they're more free than the ones that are just running, doing their own thing. And I, I believe that we see a culture that wants to just kind of have an anarchy. Nobody gets to tell me what to do. I'm free. I can master my own fate. And we can see how that's working is that it's a bunch of people living in fear and they're subject to all the elements of evil in the world. And so we get to make a difference in that. So a broken horse or a trained horse or a free horse is a stronger horse. Yeah, it's, it's why me on a horse can go round up a herd of 50 horses, wild horses. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just the animal itself is stronger and faster. It's actually got a vision and my vision that surpasses all of the, the herd. And so one horse under saddle can do more than 50 horses that are wild. Well, let's uh, let you have a hand at this one right here. All right. So you guys know that uh, we did a service just previous to this, which happened to be her mother. Um, which was quite beautiful being how it's Mother's Day. And so I just really want to honor all of you mothers, not just mothers that have children, but if you're a woman and you've been a daughter of God, you can't be a daughter of God and not eventually become a mother because you don't have to have children to be a mother. You actually just model what a feminine maternal heart of God looks like. And so, whether you have kids or not, I want to honor all of you women in here as mothers that carry the heart of God. And when the feminine heart of God is displayed fully, I believe that our culture is going to experience a tremendous amount of healing. And so I hope today is a mark in your life on how significant the role of being a mom is. And again, that's not just having your own children. That's just being a mother to the people around you and you're modeling more than you may realize. Um, and before we get too far, I had to talk Brian in to let me do this because he's like, no, this sounds like a kumbaya thing or something. We don't do that here. But I even do it in prisons because I believe that if we're not careful, we blow past moments in our life and this could be a stage and a auditorium seating and you watch as spectators and you get inspired or encouraged or entertained but you miss the fact that you are set up to have maybe one of the most powerful encounters with God that you've ever had. And the reason I believe that isn't because of what I'm going to do. It's because there's a whole bunch of people sitting in front of me that have come and said, Father, speak to me. And I can't imagine our Father saying, no, I have nothing to say. Like, He wants to speak to you. He wants to reveal things to you. He wants to encounter you today. So... It's like we're sitting down to a family meal and we're going to feed on the Word of God. So if you're not comfortable holding hands, put a hand on a shoulder or do something, but let's make ourselves one for a minute. I know, man. Get over it. You ought to see the guys in prison. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, we haven't had any fights break out yet, but... Father, we hold hands right now because we just want to physically do something to say that we're, we're, we're your children, we're your sons and daughters, and we just delight in the fact that you love us and you'll go to all lengths, even the death on a cross so that we would be convinced of your love. And so thank you for being a God of covenant and a God that fulfills promises and a father that lavishes his love on us as your people. So we submit ourselves to whatever you have to say in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay, so the last one was Mama, and she was a little bit gentle. Brian didn't like that. He wanted a little more action. And I can tell, did you notice her when the horses came on the screen? I thought that was actually quite hilarious. She's probably never seen TV before. She, she's never been out of the pasture before. And so this horse isn't wild like it's been out running on the range, but it's basically left 
to its own natural instincts. And the only thing it knows is what it's been taught and what it carries inside of her, which is this instinct to stay alive and get comfortable. Anybody relate with that? Like if we can just figure out how to stay alive and have all our comforts, we'd be fine. But we're not really, because we were built for something powerful and we've got a future and a hope and a destiny but she's got to understand that she's never seen me the right way yet. I'm just a man under a hat that right now is kind of irritating because I'm making her run around in a circle. But I want you to know that, you know, we don't get to stop the rise and the fall of the sun. The days come and they go and there's pressures that are put on us and we keep moving. But until we actually know what it's like to come face to face with what it is that we were created for, this whole thing doesn't even make sense. It's almost like I've got no purpose. This is stupid. I'm running around in a circle. I'm not going anywhere. But she doesn't know that I'm not only powerful, but She's gonna be super surprised when her and I get to actually meet because I've never met her yet. And she'll find that I'm kind. So I'm just gonna work her in some circles here for a little bit and we're actually communicating quite a bit right now. She's saying a lot of things with bobbing her head and where her ears are, the way she carries herself even the little snotty attitude she showed right there for just a second. So we're having a full-on conversation. And I'm not trying to say, hey, I'm, I'm the boss here. I just know that I can't ever help her until she's convinced that she needs help because she craves leadership. She's a herd animal. So she's either gonna be leading or she needs to be led. But because God's put animals as something that we're supposed to be stewards of, that a girl. She's gonna have to learn. It's a reverential yielding to my authority, which means that I can make her feet move but I will not take control of her. I don't want to take control of her. I simply want to influence her. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. And time and time again, you have proved you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. So the, just the little looks, I need her to know that when I say move, we gotta move because there's really no confidence that she's ever gonna have in me until she understands, if you will, my greatness. Yesterday I went to the Creation Museum and I laid back in a chair that they had there with this ceiling that was filled with the stars and the galaxies, and it gave some perspective to how, you know, that goes on forever. Like, when God created heaven and earth, it goes on forever. 
and we're never gonna get the technology to see the other side of what forever is, but we have a powerful God. I was just like, my brain didn't know, I don't have much of a brain anyhow, but it didn't know what to do with that. Because in the greater scheme of things, we got a powerful God. And if he wanted to control me, he could figure out a way to control me. But guess what he did instead? This right here. He waited for me to say, can you acknowledge my power and know that I'm kind? because my kindness is what's gonna make her want to think differently about herself and me. And I don't know if you can see it from there, but she's got scars all over her forehead, her front legs, like she's had some trauma. And they're just kind of scrapes, but I bet she's got a lot of reasons not to want to trust me or potentially anything. But what's happened already with our conversation is in all the running, the things that she was saying was one, why am I running? Two was, I don't really like you. Three, it was, I'm really kind of intrigued by you. And four, what, what do you want from me? And I don't think that she's ever asked that question before. And I love the fact that Jesus, he would come to people that it almost seems like it would be obvious what they want from him. Some blind guy came up to him and he's the, the miracle working Jesus. Yet Jesus asked him, what do you want? While I work with her for a second, can I just ask you, if God stood before you, and maybe this is actually the case right now that you've been brought into this place, and God is saying, what, what do you want? Like, what can I do for you? Find out if you got that question. Remains to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Your history can't prove there's nothing you can't do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to. got really good manners. That's good. I know a whole lot of people that back in Idaho, where I'm from, we call them good old boys. They got real good, well, they got good manners. I guess in our culture, they're considered good manners. They ain't afraid to spit in front of a girl, but so they might not have perfect manners, but they're kind people. They're good people, they work hard, they take care of things, they're not liars, cheaters, stealers. Um, you know. But as far as I'm concerned, they might as well be just like this horse that you still don't have what you were created for. You're still alone in your own thoughts and your own perceptions of things. And you saw me move around her a little bit because I want her to get used to me not just being in front of her leading her, but. I wanna be able to touch her with my body simply because all of her instincts want to fight against this, like this kind of closeness to her is gonna feel threatening. 
and I want her to know that she can be close to me and, and feel safe next to me because she was actually created not to just be around me, but to, to carry me. And that's usually a pretty big step. If you ever watch any old Westerns, you want to know about the way they used to train horses is they would tie them up to where they had nowhere to go and they would force themselves upon them. They would twist an ear, they would blindfold them, they would run them till they're dead tired and really give them no choice. Do you think that would work here? Or you think that would be a better way to do this? Like it almost seems silly to ask the question when you've seen this, because rather than that, we've actually allowed her to make decisions on her own based on how she sees me. Now I want her to be able to see herself. And if she'll allow me to get on her, then her and I are gonna have a different kind of connection to where she's gonna fully yield who she is to me. And in that yielding, she's gonna find all of that power. ever been on her. She's never had a saddle on her, so nothing's ever been on her back. This is a brand new feeling for her. Not sure what to do with it. It's all right. Brian's just hoping she bucks me off. Maybe we should clap. Keep going. taught a lot about his kingdom and the church talks a lot about being ones that follow the rules Jesus kind of turned everything up on its head and reminded them if we're going to talk about the word of God we're going to have to go back to what it's all about and that is that you love God with your whole heart with all your strength with all your might and that you love others it's just, it really comes down to this and I'll never be a leader that's worthy of, of her devotion until she knows that I'm willing to lay myself down so that she'll be lifted up. 
And I just think that it's so amazing that King Jesus was willing to do this for us and make it to where this ain't just a religious belief system. It's not a self-help program. This is a new creation that happens because we say yes to the love of God. We say yes to the gift that Jesus gave us when he says that I present my life to you. Now it's your opportunity Will you present your life to me so that you can be filled with all that I have. It's not trickery. This is not a horse training trick or we certainly didn't deceive you. This horse has never had anybody on or never been trained. There's, he has every reason in the world to buck and kick and bite. Why isn't she? She doesn't feel like she has to. Why would we resist the love of God? Is it because you just didn't understand it? Why do you still feel like you're only halfway in? And that there's still so much shame in your life because you feel like you're not doing things good enough. Is that coming from Jesus? This child said no. I wonder why Jesus said, hmm. okay, if you see where her ears are, see her ears and she just isn't very happy with what just happened I'm not sure what happened but when she lays her ears back like that she's not saying hi okay uh huh so remember whenever Jesus was talking to some people about what sin looks like and he kind of whittled everything down to have you ever <laughs> had a thought in your mind hatred towards a brother you're guilty of murder lust in your heart you're guilty of adultery you covet your brother's stuff you're guilty of stealing it's almost like he gets everything back to the heart and what's going on in her heart right now is she's figuring out how to stay obedient for a second but she's trying to figure out what to do with what's going on in her heart she keeps pinning her ears back like mm, I think I liked my way of doing things better but that's okay like I'm not mad at her because she doesn't fully understand yet I'm not mad at her for not getting it and I'm committed to patiently <laughs> that's a good girl even though she was <laughs> it's important that we move Because if she just stays in one spot, she kind of gets stuck in her own head and she forgets what we're doing here.
It's something, if you watch the transition, where she had her ears pinned back, she was really, that's a really aggressive look. It's almost like if looks could kill. Come on, husbands. You know what I'm talking about. You've had that look before. Just a glance and you know that, uh uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Well, it's the beauty of, of her strength and the strength of her beauty that makes it to where it matters. And what she's starting to realize is what I see in her is far different than anything that she's ever seen in herself because she just thought herself to be this animal of instinct that just lives and eats and dies. Maybe have a baby on the way. But if I hadn't gone after her, she would have died like that. She would have had the same lifestyle as a cow, really. Other than America, we don't eat them or make boots out of them. But her life would essentially be of the same value. But when she was built for this, that she's got this beautiful strength about her, that in partnership with me, it makes it to where there's no more boundaries. She doesn't have to be contained by fences. What would happen if humanity got this revelation right here that when we partner with God's heart, because we've no longer had any separation between us and the Father because Jesus fixed that, that we become one with God and He becomes one with us. Like Jesus, the Father and I are one and if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He says, I'm the Word of God made flesh and I'm dwelling among you. He says, I'm the light that's come and in the now He calls you and I the light and that all nations would be called to our brightness. What, where's our brightness, family? Why is it that we can do something so magical and powerful with this animal, yet there's something so stubborn in our own hearts or so fearful in our own hearts that we won't yield to the goodness and the power of God. I've had the privilege of traveling to a lot of different countries and we still have the greatest nation on earth. That's worth applauding. because people are getting so cynical and we're getting so filled with bad news that it's like the only thing that matters to her right now is not her next meal. It doesn't matter to her what else is going on outside of this round pen. She's captivated by me. And I believe that we are being invited into as a people, if we are the people of God, then let's be the people of God. To where this intimacy, this oneness that we get to have as far as a heart connection with God that it becomes the one reality that drives our life. Yeah, she's got these owies on her. And part of us being close, part of us having this trust, is that she'll even let me heal her wounds. And we're a wounded nation, we're wounded people. We're wounded people sitting in this room. And Jesus didn't come to be a coping mechanism with your wounds. He came to heal him. To where all the rejection and all the fear and the discouragement and the relational issues and the the wonder what we're gonna do next. He he wants to heal him. That that's amen, by the way. I just I'm gonna give her a gift, and it's a gift that comes with me. Because Jesus said that when you receive me, not only do you get all of God in you, but I come to give gifts to men. And those gifts are gonna be gifts that aren't just for you, they're gonna be gifts that are gonna make it to where your life surrendered to him is gonna become that much more powerful in the lives of people around you. 
things that you thought were just normal giftings. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about supernatural things that God's gonna give you that you weren't born with. It's a new gift that comes with His Spirit so that now what you carry is something that you can give away to other people. you can picture what this used to look like, but we would literally beat the fear out of them. And I'm sorry to say that's how I was trained to, to treat horses until God gave me this. But you've got to dominate them somehow. You've got to make them afraid, more afraid of you than they are afraid of everything else. And just putting the saddle on them would become a horrible ordeal because it, it goes against all their instincts. And now that it's strapped to her, you know, it is a very different feeling for her. So we don't really know what, how she's gonna react to it. But I just want you to see again and again and again that if this is how God interacts with us, what are we doing with it? And what are we doing in regards to how we're treating each other? Because if this is how he displays leadership, come on, sweetheart. Feels weird to move with it. Oh. 
Wow, she's doing good. Brian asked me after the last service why the horse was so cooperative and really was, even more so than, than her. And like, I want to talk about the horsemanship side of it. I want to talk about the nature of a horse. But really, this is what happened when God moves in on something. And I don't know if you've ever been in another environment where you can tangibly feel the presence of God that is just bringing calm to a storm. Because there's plenty of chaos going on. There's all sorts of things stimulating this horse that she's never had to deal with. Yet what's got all of her attention? It's, yeah, it's almost a piece that makes me want to take a nap. It's shalom. That all is well. And it's not because anything got fixed here. It's not because we taught her any tricks and it's not because we didn't give her any drugs. What other explanation is there? But this is what happens when we function with the principles that the kingdom gave us that love casts out all fear. What casts out all fear? Man, we overuse that word, but it's like, this is what it is, that it's patient and it's kind and it never gives up and it always believes and it hopes and it doesn't keep record of the wrongs. And this is not a, a match of wit. This is what happens when on one side of the relationship, somebody will manage themselves well enough and wait for the other person or the other thing to feel safe enough that we can actually communicate. Now, her and I don't have a whole lot to talk about right now. I mean, in front of y'all. But what would ever hold her back from being everything that she was created to be? What happened in this moment that made it to where she set up for the rest of her life to go from glory to glory to glory? Have I wrote her yet? Touching every heart, oh, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, it's her.
God, help it be this simple for us. It's like my trained horse. Should we bow? I, I mean, she did that all on her own. So I thank you for clapping. For her. It's just like it, we're making this fun. But please don't miss the significance of being in this room right now because you just, just don't happen. It's a transformation of a life simply because of an encounter with love. And it's something that we can't fabricate. I can't, Todd Pierce, teach a horse to do this in 40 minutes. There has to be this invisible, this un touchable aspect of who it is that we are that makes it to where we become the world changers. We become the tip of the sword of what it looks like to be a part of the tribe of the Lion of Judah to where we don't just sit silently and try to keep our hands folded and mind our manners. There's something fierce about this type of love. There's something that won't sit back and just watch everything go to hell and blame the government for it or blame the economy for it, or blame racism for it. We've got to be done with that. Like, we've got to heal our wounds, have an encounter with love, and start displaying that to the world. Because if Jesus said, yeah. If Jesus said that you're worth it, then I guess I have to say that you're worth it. And, you know, I never really know what I'm going to get when I come into a, a ring with a horse I mean it's everything from this to I jump out of the ring <laughs> uh, but it always ends in the same place and I say that it's worth it to me you guys are worth it the Tome family Crossroads Church said you're worth it that whatever it takes because this isn't a dog and pony show. This isn't just a great metaphor. This isn't an invitation into an encounter that you can't deny. This wasn't a message. This was a transformation. And because she's a new creation, all things become possible. And I don't know what you thought was possible in your lifetime, and maybe you're old enough that you kind of gave up on being significant. Right now, in Jesus' name, I stand against that accusation knowing that you've been significant and your significance goes from glory to glory and that we need moms to become grandmas and great-grandmas and we need generations of love being given to each other in family. And if your family sucks, then find a kingdom family. If you can't live in the toxic environment that you're in, I'm not talking about getting a divorce or something. I'm going to make it, get myself in a hole here. I might need help with this later, Brian. I'm saying that Jesus said, follow me. And if it means leaving a culture that's destroying you, then follow Jesus. Like, he, he is the way maker. He is the only promise keeper. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to this except through him. I got one minute and I want to give her a gift just because I want you to see this. Right now, the only thing that she's got her attention on other than me is she's wondering where her mama is. I don't know if you notice, she keeps looking out that door. Her mama's out there probably going crazy. I love that about mamas. We had to write a song about mamas and horses and trains. Okay, so she's never had a bit in her mouth. So it's a little bit awkward. And this is just going to help for some of you that might be watching and thinking, oh, that horse has been so handled, been ridden. Well, she hadn't. Look at her chew on her bit. She doesn't know what to do with it. But here's why this gift matters. 
other than to get a lot of kicks. And it's kind of like putting peanut butter on your cat's, the roof of her cat's mouth. Am I the only one that's done that? Do it once, it's really fun. Because they love peanut butter and they don't know what to do with their tongue. But with this, I'm gonna help steer her life because when we get outside of these fences, it's gonna be really important that she knows what I'm saying. And when we hide the word of God in our hearts, when we know what God's word says, it becomes like this bit in our mouth that, that controls our tongue. We start, we start yielding our tongue to the word of God and we start speaking what he's speaking. He's not speaking that the planet's in desti destitute, that the nations are gonna fail, that this next generation's in huge trouble because of all the things going on. I don't think that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, rise up, sons. Come on, daughters. Let's go do what it is that we were created to do. Be guided by this heart that's so pure. It's been yielded to Jesus. Let, let the word of God be the thing that's like this sword that you use as you go out into a culture that's desperate for truth. They just need to hear the truth. They need to see the truth displayed through your lives. Amen. I live in Idaho and <clears throat> I love this family here. This is uh, my second time being here and I truly am just amazed at what y'all are doing in your community and in your families and your desire for more. And those of you that are in the room just because your wife made you, way to go guys. But let's, let's be different. Let's not run away from the very thing that's given us life. And Brian Tom and this entire staff, they've devoted their lives to you. And so I want him to come up and we'll see what after that. So that's not painful, her, she has no teeth back there. So she's got a gap between her back teeth and her front teeth and where the bit sits um, isn't painful. It's just, she doesn't know where to put her tongue. So that's right a now. fresh scab right here in the front. Yeah, she's got owies on her. She's been cut up. She's been through it a little bit. Jeez, yes, yes, all right. Well, do I get the rider? Well. I was, I was going to ask, but I didn't know. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I'm a writer. That's a... I will, on her, I'll hang on to her. <laughs> <laughs> Is she a little, uh, little wilder there? Well, she doesn't know very much, and she's still kind of looking at a lot of things. All right. So. All right, I'm rubbing you. I'm nice. I'm a nice guy. I am. I'm a nice guy. Ooh. I have silver. So once you've had an encounter with love, the beauty of it is that it has to be spread. It's it's con kind of contagious. Yeah. There go. Go this way. Okay. No, no we're, we're gonna have to give riding lessons. These don't neck rein. Oh, okay. So, so we have to pull one rein because right. she's just figuring out what that bit is. So yeah. if you pull that rein, she's gonna come this direction. Right to go right. Yeah. Let's go left. Oh, let's go left. There you go. Come on. Come on. There you go. And I'll take her a minute to figure out what that pulling even means. All right. Let's but this around. is the journey, you know. <laughs> I love that we got your pastor on this horse. All right. And that you guys have a pastor that will get on a horse like this. We've got some tomorrow that we'll see. Over here. <laughs> over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch right. the halter out and make it to where she's a little bit funner. So, oh, no. Now she's loose. Now 
she's loose. I'm all right. So just so we make sure we're getting this illustration, Todd is God and this horse is you and I. Todd is smarter than this horse. He has more real world knowledge than this horse. He knows things that this horse needs to know. This horse will, does not know at all right now. At some point, every illustration breaks down because this, this horse is, has more muscle mass than Todd. But this is, this is God to us. And the reason why we're moved so much when we see Todd working with this horse is because whether you've known or not, that's how God has been working with you. He's been pushing sometimes. He's been touching on wounds sometimes. He's been tender sometimes. He's kind of been running you around the ring sometimes. All to get you here today. I believe that God foresaw in the beginning of time a child that he would have that was named your name, being in a place right here, right now. And he wants you to be free. He wants you to be trained. He wants you to be who he's created you to be. And I don't know if you've ever allowed God to bridle you, allowed God to saddle you, allowed God to be your master that gives you strength, that makes you free. But I'll lead you through a prayer right now if you've never done it. This is how you come under the authority of a loving God who's been running after you and has been waiting for this moment. You can just say something like this to Jesus. Jesus, I want you in my life. I want to submit to you. I ask that you would forgive me. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I will follow you and be in your herd the rest of my life. Amen. Why don't we all stand right now? Let's, uh, let's do a song together, shall we? Y'all sing this with me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will see of the goodness of God Sing that again All my life All my life you have been faithful Tell it now lay down, I surrender now, I give you everything. I know when most of us sing that, we don't mean that. Sometimes we have to fake it to make it. Sometimes we say words like that so our heart gets into that condition. But I'll tell you what, why I lay down my life for him, because of the preceding verse. He's been running after me. His goodness is running after me. It's running after me. His goodness has been running after you. Because that's who he is. He's a good God. Let's sing that again. Sing this out with me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. You sing. Your. Sing your goodness. Your goodness. Your. It's running. Your good. Running out with my life. 